Ladies and gentlemen, from our nation's capital, please welcome the United States Army Band Purging Zone under the baton of our leader and commander, Colonel Andrew J. Esch. General John J. Pershing ordered the formation of the United States Army Band as the premier musical organization of our nation's senior service. For 98 years, Pershing's own has maintained a proud tradition of excellence, performing here at home and around the world. From the grandeur of the Capitol steps and the White House lawn to the battlefields of World War II and the hallowed hills of Arlington National Cemetery, we use music to tell the Army's story and honor the sacrifice of all of those who have served our nation. The soldiers you see before you represent more than 185,000 men and women serving in over 140 countries across the globe at this very hour continuing the common thread of selfless service woven through the tapestry of our American army for more than 244 years. And now please stand and join Sergeant Major Colin Eaton in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, <laughs> 
Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and thanks for joining us here at Schlesinger Hall and hello to all of you watching online. I'm Sergeant First Class Meredith Rouse and I'll be your announcer for this evening's program featuring the United States Army Concert Band. The piece you just heard was Rocky Point Holiday by Ron Nelson. Written between 1968 and 1969, it was inspired by a vacation the composer took to Rocky Point Amusement Park in Warwick Neck, Rhode Island. Up next is a work that has a special place in the history of the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone. It's a piece that this ensemble commissioned and premiered back in 1951. At the request of Lieutenant Hugh Curry, one of, the leading, one of the leading figures in 20th century music set out to write a symphony for wind band, forever changing the way many performers and composers would consider music for this ensemble. That composer was Paul Hindemith, and the piece he wrote for us was his symphony in B-flat. Since its premiere, this three-movement masterwork has become a mainstay of the wind band repertoire and is the only piece Hindemith wrote expressly for wind band. And now, here is Paul Hindemith's Symphony in B-flat.
up next. I hope you're in the mood for a march because we've got one picked out for you that was written by a Hungarian military musician who started out as a bassoonist, violinist, and percussionist and eventually became the bandmaster sometimes referred to as the Bohemian Susa. Julius Fucic was born in Prague in 1872 and went on to lead the band of the 86th Hungarian Infantry at Budapest. Today, he's perhaps most well-known for two works, The Entrance of the Gladiators, which you might recognize as the popular circus-themed tune, Thunder and Blazes, and our next piece, which evokes the feeling of a grand Italian march. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the Florentiner March.
The composer of our next piece, Michael Doherty, is a native of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. He is the son of a dance band drummer and the oldest of five brothers, all of whom became professional musicians. His orchestral music has won six Grammy Awards, and he's been recognized by the League of American Orchestras as one of the top ten most performed American composers of concert music. His piece, Brooklyn Bridge for Solo Clarinet and Symphonic Band, was written in 2005 and draws its inspiration from one of the most loved and admired bridges in New York City. The work is in four movements, each one depicting a musical view from the Brooklyn Bridge. Tonight, we'll be performing the final movement titled North, Empire State Building, Chrysler Building, and Rockefeller Center. In this movement, Michael Doherty also imagines Artie Shaw, one of the great jazz clarinetists from the 1940s, playing in the Rainbow Room up on the 65th floor of Rockefeller Center. We're thrilled to be able to feature one of our newer members as soloist tonight. Staff Sergeant Chaz Sonoda is from Torrance, California, and joined the band back in 2018. He holds degrees from DePaul and Northwestern Universities, and as if it wasn't enough that he was a virtuoso clarinetist, he's also an accomplished student of the Chinese language, and he's been awarded prizes at Chinese speech competitions at Purdue University, the University of Notre Dame, and the Beijing Language and Culture University. Here to play North from Michael Doherty's Brooklyn Bridge, please help me welcome to the stage Staff Sergeant Chaz Sonoda. Thank <laughs> you. 
One more, one more round of applause for Chas Sonoda on clarinet, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us this evening. It is always an honor and a privilege to perform for you. And now a word from our sponsor. Now, it might seem obvious since we are the United States Army Band, but believe it or not, I do get asked. And so, yes, if you're still wondering, all of the soldiers on stage are active duty soldiers. And it is our great pleasure to build relationships with communities like yours on behalf of our Army. Now, our next piece is entitled Forged in Fire. And in the spirit of shameless self-promotion, I've paired it with a video that I hope shows a few of the 150 cool ways people serve in our great all-volunteer army. This is Mark Waters, Forged in Fire.
The composer of our next selection, Mason Bates, was named the 2018 Composer of the Year by Musical America and was named the first composer in residence at the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. A DJ and new music curator, his cutting edge compositional style has integrated electronic sounds into symphonic music in a very immediate and unique way. Tonight, we'll be tackling Mason Bates' ode to a long past summer spent as a teenager at the Brevard Music Festival in North Carolina. Electronics weave the sounds of katydids, cicadas, and birds throughout the piece, and you'll hear four distinct movements which flow from one to the next. Nan's Porch, which begins at dusk, katydid country, which evolves into a bluesy tune, the melodic southern midnight, and finally, the singing of the first bird leads us to locust singing in the heat of dawn. We couldn't perform this piece without the electronics bringing those iconic sounds of a summer evening through the sound system. And lucky for us tonight, we have our own resident army band DJ stepping out of the flute section to solo on the laptop and keep us all on track. That soldier is Master Sergeant Rob Autry. <laughs> And now, here is Mason Bates' Rusty Air in Carolina.
Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for joining us here tonight and to let you know that we absolutely love to see you at another one of our upcoming performances. You can always find schedules and information on our website, usarmyband.com. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the US Army Band and on Facebook at the United States Army Band. If you happen to take any pictures tonight, please tag us and let us know what you thought of the show. And now we've come to one of my personal favorite parts of this program. It's our great pleasure to be able to take the time to honor all of you out there who have served in the armed forces. We'll be playing all of the service songs, so if you or a family member or if a loved one served, we invite you to stand if you're able during your song because this is your armed forces salute. This selection is from a musical that had its premiere at the Arena Stage in Washington, D.C., and later went on to open on Broadway at the Music Box Theater in 2016. The music and lyrics are by the team of Pasek and Paul, with a book by Stephen Levinson. It was nominated for nine Tony Awards and brought home six, among them Best Musical and Best Score. It's a relatively new song, but it's become a favorite of ours at the Army Band because of its message. 
Here to perform, you will be found from the hit musical Dear Evan Hansen. Please help me welcome to the stage the Army Voices. Have you ever felt like nobody was there? Have you ever felt forgotten in the middle of nowhere? Have you ever felt like you could disappear? Like you could fall and no one would hear? Well, let the lonely feeling wash away Maybe there's a reason to believe you'll be okay Cause when you don't feel strong enough to stand You can reach, reach out your hand And oh Someone will come running And I know They'll take you home Even when the dark comes crashing through When you need a friend to carry you And when you're broken on the ground You will be found So let the sun come streaming in Cause you'll reach up and you'll rise again Lift your head and
will be found You will be About this time last year, Lieutenant Elizabeth Elliott, one of our newest band officers, called me. I was aware at the time that Elizabeth had recently lost her unborn child. Elizabeth called me because she had commissioned a new piece of music to commemorate her daughter, Madison Hope, and to give voice to the journey of loss and recovery shared by so many. She was looking to create something beautiful and she needed an ensemble to perform the premiere. I knew immediately it was something we should be part of. We are fortunate tonight to have the composer with us, and so to introduce our final piece, please welcome composer Brian Balmages. Pregnancy loss is something that nearly all of us are familiar with, either personally or through friends, and yet it remains something that is very rarely spoken about in the public light until tonight, where it takes center stage. When Elizabeth contacted me about a year ago, about two months after she experienced the stillbirth of her daughter, Madison. It began a very long journey for the two of us, and I think I learned a lot more about myself in that process. She was looking for something for her daughter, and that quickly became something much greater. And she really wanted it to be known, as do I, that the dedication on this piece is not just for Madison, but it is also for all of the angel babies, all of the lost infants, all of the lost children who are just toddlers. And it's also for all of their parents who grieve daily, some decades and decades still, after having experienced something like this. How do you write about this? There was only one thing that I could think about, and that was a series of questions that I thought needed to be answered. And so this piece is roughly in three sections, and each section is based on a question that I was asking myself. The first question, what does unconditional love sound like? Not temporary love, not even falling in love, but unconditional forever love. And so you'll hear some beautiful moments. You'll hear breathing. You'll hear a lullaby. <clears throat> and this lullaby is based on a chord progression from Ben Fold's The Luckiest. It's an original lullaby that I wrote, but I knew that Elizabeth played this lullaby for her daughter, Madison, every day while she was pregnant. And so you'll hear a lullaby in the beginning of this piece. The second question what does it sound like when that love is shattered? And I originally thought that word was broken until I realized that that love is never broken. That bond is never broken. So what does it sound like when that is shattered? And you will hear anger. You'll hear rage. You'll hear desperation. And then the final question, 
which perhaps is the most difficult question that I think we as humanity have been trying to answer forever. What does it sound like when a child first sees the face of God? That was a difficult one. And fortunately, I was in the middle of conversion into the Catholic faith where I was exploring these very questions. And so I set out to try and answer that very question. You will hear little moments of the Alleluia from all creatures of our God and King. Those of you familiar with choral music will hear the entire piece hinting at salvation is created, a powerful choral setting by Russian composer Chestikov. And you'll hear intertwined in all of that this lullaby, this original lullaby for Madison that does come back at the very end <clears throat> in a very heroic and powerful way. The final thing I'll leave you with is what does happen when a child meets the face of God. We always hear about trumpets and power and glory, and I agree with that, but I also thought that the most powerful moments that we all experience in prayer in quiet, are quiet moments. And I realized that while those powerful moments are there, that in fact that very moment is the most personal, vulnerable, quiet moment that one could possibly experience. And I think you'll all know exactly when we do arrive at that moment. I'm so looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to Lieutenant Elliot being out here you will notice, those of you who do not know, that I do not believe that she will be in uniform. And that is because she is currently 31 weeks pregnant with her rainbow baby. So she will not be conducting this alone. She'll be conducting this with her 31-week-old son, Oliver. So certainly hope that you do enjoy love and light.